Let's talk about immigration in our industry. We have an immigration crisis. We have a lot of immigrants coming in. Florida is passing law about you know working there. Uh, what's Midwest looks like? Indiana? Do you have like what's your labor force look like? Who's doing the work? Who's in the roofing industry here? Well, I, I think the people that generally, when you think of roofers in Indiana, they're going to be one or two people, right? They're going to be Amish or they're going to be Mexican illegals or or of Spanish descent. A lot of Guatemalans and things like that. Um, primarily, that's the workforce that is on the roof. Um, we actually just have an Amish and he's got some Mexicans and then we have an all white people crew or all American crew or whatever you want to call it. Um, but like they're, it's different, right? So like, I wish that I could hire the immigrants, but due to laws and things like that and payroll and having everyone's W2 that works here. So I can't W2 them because they don't have social security. And, you know, some of the best people I've seen that are roofers are of Spanish descent. Uh, or Amish, uh, and the Amish people don't want to pay taxes, so they don't want to be W two. Oh wow! And, and right, because it's yeah, 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 they get paid. And then, and then the Mexicans, they just can't, you know, legally do legally it. do it. Um, it's a if they would change stuff that me to allow them to work and pay taxes, they would, you know, they would pay taxes, but they can't because then they'll get found out and everything. So it's. That's a real, I would be able to have 10 crews right now if I could hire all of the people. Because what happens is, is there's this vacuum where since the Amish people don't have to pay taxes and they just write paper checks and do all this other stuff, they'll hire all the illegals to do it, the labor and uh, they'll just run the crews. So there's one Amish guy and eight to 10 Mexicans or Spanish people. And that's the whole gambit. So like they're cheaper, they work mm-hmm. faster, harder, they're more skilled. Uh, they work the weekends. They don't stop. Uh, Hard to work with? Like, compete against them? Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as scaling, for sure. Like, uh, taking people um, of non, that heritage or that that style and trying to make them, hey, you want to go up, it's going to be 100 degrees on the roof and you're going to work 12-hour days and it's you're not going to make $100,000 a year. Like, are you in? What is earning potential of a roofer? Um install it like someone who installs metal roof and he's very good oh, it's tough right so is he a ground guy is he uh is he a custom dude Can like he, skilled skilled is he skilled i mean you could you could potentially if you're not going to run a crew and just be on the crew you should be probably looking to that 50 to seventy five thousand dollars um for being a, a regular run-of-the-mill hand you know that's where you should you should try to be at um, and then if you run a crew, you should be at six feet. If you're good enough to that, you know everything, you can do anything on the roof and you could take anybody and go do a whole roof project. Man, you know, you should be making six figures. That's not bad. I mean, compared to other jobs, I mean, people at the banks, you know, make like 50K a year. They work in the air conditioning. They work eight to five. They don't have to show up early or stay late. Yeah. That's why that exists. And that's not for everybody. My dudes work super hard and they're super good. The benefit of having uh, all, let's say, English-speaking crew is that they can communicate to the customer effectively. I found that when before I had install crews that worked just for Perfect Steel Solutions, in-house people. When I was in the first couple of years of business, I hired all you know subcontractors, Spanish. all Spanish or Amish people. They couldn't communicate to the customer. There was a lot of language barrier stuff that would happen. Amish Cust- people don't have language barrier. They do. They really? really do because they don't get exposed to anything else besides Amish culture. I see. So and English is there, so but communication skills are not. Let's just throw this out here. I'll, I'll give sure. I'll give away this stuff. Uh, whatever they go to the bathroom out in the out, outside. Number two, number one, they don't care, right? They don't they don't care. There's nothing weird about it to them. That's what they do. They don't go all the way inside to go do that. They'll pee in a neighborhood in a golf course. They'll take a crap in the woods. They, they'll do whatever. They don't. Is have, it a thing? Is it like it's common literally complaint? happened? I've had to give away thousands of dollars before to make it up to a customer, because um, they found a box in a field full of poop that an uh, Amish per- person has left. Um, the people will go outside, even when the customer was like, "Hey, you can come inside." And use the bat. They, they, they do that. They refuse. Ring cameras uh, when they first came out. Uh, I got to find out a lot about my, what my crews were doing because they would catch them on the ring cameras going potty in the yard or something like that. Like, 
It, That's it, embarrassing. It's so embarrassing because you don't think that thing was happening. I didn't have a meeting beforehand. Go, hey guys, don't pee in my yard. Don't pee in the yards of the customers. <laughs> you know, like. That's a weird thing. That's I don't. I didn't think of having that conversation with them. The All Mexicans right. is the same way. Um, whether it would be uh, they would go into people's uh, garages or use their microwaves or plug into their power when they shouldn't do or borrow their rakes and tools. I've had, you know, Mexican crews before that you know everything is kind of family style and they have gone into people's garages and got drinks out of their fridge, like waters or whatever, and, and, and used their brooms or rakes when they forgot theirs. And I lost thousands and thousands of dollars paying people going, I'm so sorry they broke your grandmother's rake. Like, <laughs> apparently it was a very nice rake, and it was bad. So, like, there's an advantage that they are super efficient and they're super hardworking and stuff like that, but there's disadvantages to hiring those crews as well. So that we found out that um, having in-house crews, training them up and putting them out there, the communication and the expectations get followed through more consistently and our customers can expect a certain level of quality, but it is very hard to scale. You can go on any of your groups that we're both a part of yep. and there's how many people going, hey, looking for installers, we'll pay this much a square in Northwest Ohio, Southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I've got 15 jobs in Florida, I need, you can't scale, and that's why these crews come in subcontract and they travel and they go do all this stuff.